up, viewers? Welcome back to another episode of ENC Question Reflection, where you learn truth, knowledge, and understanding. Today, we're going to be talking about something rather um, simple, more or less, simple, simply said. Um, before we do this, before we get started, I would do want to go ahead and remind you, if you have not done so already, to subscribe to this channel. Uh, hit that notification bell and select all. Make sure that you like this video and share it with your family, friends, or anybody who can benefit from this video. And comment if you feel you have you need to say something or you got something that you you know want to talk about or whatever. So let's go ahead and get started. This video is going to be rather short, but straight to the topic. So the topic is this: What do you do to make your words hold weight? How do you make your words hold weight? What does that mean? Does my words hold weight? So have you ever, um, especially when it comes to children, have you ever said something to somebody and they was like, whatever, you full of crap. Or you ain't finna do that. Or um, you tell them, you know, all right, go to your room or, you know, you're going to do this, whatever. And they just blow you off. So that's what it means by your words not holding weight. They don't hold anything. They don't mean anything. They're basically just you wasting your breath. Talking. You don't want to be a person who wastes their breath talking. When you speak and you want your words to mean something, you want them to be taken seriously. And how you do that is simple. When you say something, mean what you say. When you say you're going to do something, make sure that you do it. If you tell your child, if they don't have their room clean by 10 o'clock that next morning, or you're going to take something from them, you make sure you take whatever it is that you said you was going to take. Don't be like, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm going to take it, and then be like, okay, now. You have to. You have to. You have to stick to what you say you're going to do. Because if you don't stick to what you say you're going to do, guess what's going to happen? They're going to take you for a joke. They're going to think everything that you say don't mean anything and they're going to they you're they're just going to get away with everything so you can talk all you want to have you ever been um around a parent or like a, a family member where your child listens to them better than they do you that's because what that person says means something to them it holds weight it's not just something that's barely felt or barely touched when I say what I say, I mean what I say. Now do what I say. But if you're always saying something and you never do it, they're going to blow that junk off like a feather on a pillow. It mean nothing to them. You have to. You have to make sure that what you say is what you mean. For, me to, for that to work for me, I had to do a lot of... Um, I had to do a lot of like, not rediscovering myself, but I had to do a lot of um, changing. And what I mean by that is, so my, um, I used to laugh a lot. Like you wouldn't believe that because I'm so super serious all the time, but I used to laugh a lot. And the thing is when I would laugh, and my kids would see me laugh, then they would be, they wouldn't be they would take anything I said seriously because, like, I'd say something and then they'd make some dorky face and then I'd be like, and I'd go to laughing. So they wouldn't take me serious. So I actually trained myself to stop laughing. Like, I have gotten so good at not laughing that somebody can say something to me and I can instantly be like, laugh, and they just be like, that's how good I got at it. But it took a lot of work and a lot of training and a lot of self-control. But my kids know when I'm playing and they know when I'm for real. 
and it it took it took a lot a lot of work to to master but once i did master it it was definitely well worth it um because if my kids if if i start laughing my kids will be like okay mom is just kidding but when i got that face and it's that serious face like they're like okay mom's for real and so it really is beneficial to learn that um but also it's not even just that it's um I got to the point where I was like, okay, so I'm not laughing. Um, but when I tell them I'm going to take something from them, I would be like, oh, okay, come on. Cause I had a really bad childhood. Um, and so I really didn't want any of my bad childhood to rub off on my kids or like to have for my kids to have that effect. But some stuff that I went through, they actually need to go through. So I, I, there's a thing called tough love. And I know a lot of people, majority of people have heard that. So tough love is all about being able to do something that you may not necessarily want to do, but you need to do it. So like, you might not want to take your kid's video game. You might not want to take it. You might want to, um, you know, let them play it or whatever. But the fact that you said you were going to take it, if you don't take it, they're going to learn that you don't mean business, that you're just a joke. And so therefore you have to, and I've actually told my kids before, I've actually said, look, I might not necessarily want to do this, but I have to. And I'm doing this because I need you to understand that when I say what I said, I need you to believe what I said. And I need you to know that when I say something, I mean business. So you will learn today. And then I end up taking it and I do exactly what I said I was going to do. And so my kids have got to the point where they're like, if I say, okay, do it, do this. And they don't do it. They can guarantee that I'm going to, I'm going to, there's some form of consequence that's going to take place. So they have learned that. So that goes back to the topic where your words have to hold weight. They can't just be like a little feather thing. You can't even feel it. You have to mean what you say. And that's not just with kids. That's adults too. Um, I mean, the Bible says this. I go back to the Bible. The Bible says that you let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. So even when you're talking to adults, you don't want to make promises and never keep them. You don't want to be somebody who says, OK, I'll do it. And then you never do it. Or um, you don't want to be somebody that. Um, who says, you know what, I um. Let me borrow $10. I'll pay you back. And then you borrow $10 and you never pay them back. You're getting a sad, a really bad reputation. And that will, that will turn into you not being trustworthy. You can't believe anything that you say. And so your words don't mean anything. You know, your word is your bond, but if you don't, if your words don't hold weight and they don't mean anything, then your bond is broken. Your bond is done for. You don't get to say, you know, I promise this and I do it because nobody's going to believe anything you say. So that's part of being an adult. That's part of letting of learning how to let your words hold weight. When you say you're going to do something, do it. If you say you're going to be somewhere, be it. And the thing about it is, Learn to say no, because a lot of the stuff that you are saying you're going to do and you don't do it, a lot of that is because you are saying you're going to do something you really don't have the time to do. Or if you do it, it's going to overwhelm you. And so, so that could be a whole nother video. Learn to say no. You can't say yes to everything. People are going to trust in you. They're going to be, you know, wanting you to do stuff for them. And if you say yes to everything, you're never going to have time for anything else. And then therefore, when you break that promise, your word eventually will mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. So you are going to have to start 
even if you're a known liar, even if you are somebody who nobody trusts, you can build that back and you can have your um, have your words hold weight. You're just going to have to work a little bit harder than the average person because you have you have broken that word bond. So it may take a little bit more time, but you can do it. It's not like, you know, the, it's the end of the world and you're just never going to get that back. You can get that back. So you're going to want to start working on that, especially if you have kids. Now, adults are normally liars. You know, they lie about dumb stuff and stuff like that. But when you have kids, you are, you, you're not going to be able to gain control um, of a child. And I don't mean like gain control, like, um, you know, out of, you know, out of control, or anything like that. But like, you're not going to be able to manage them as well as you could if your word meant something. Because I, in one of my very first videos, it's called disciplining with a purpose. I specifically said that there's three ways that the three ways to discipline is verbally, mentally, and physically in that order. That's how you discipline effectively to a child is verbally, mentally, and physically. If your word held weight, you would never have to get past verbal. Mentally means like you're taking things that they love or you're doing something to them that is making them think, um, you know, like grounding them and all that good stuff. It's like that. Um, physical, of course, is where you're hitting them. But if your if your word held weight, if if they knew that what you said went, you would never have to get past the verbal. You would. be able to say anything to that child. They, they would believe you. They would know you meant business and they would do exactly what it is that they're supposed to be doing to avoid any kind of consequence because they know that if it gets past that, you will act on it. So if they don't want their video game taken or if they don't want to be grounded or if they don't want their bike taken or whatever it is, consequences that you use for a mental level, if they don't want that, they know that your word means business. They won't go past that. When you say stop, they will stop. Okay. I'm going to give you an example. I use switches. Switches are very small, um, very thin um, sticks or like, they're not branches, but they're like sticks. Um, TV switches, they're very thin um, sticks. Very, they're, they're very, um, you can move them like they're very, very thin sticks. So I use them as for direction, for correction. Um, that is my physical. Let me tell you something. I have a two-year-old grandson and I do not have to, I can pick all I have to say is where's my switch. That's all I have to say. I don't even have to actually hit him with the switch. All I have to see if he's jumping in my um, front room or running around, cause I don't like a lot of running around in my, um, in my house. Um, I just don't, I'm, I'm one of those that I, I like people to sit their butts down, be quiet. Don't be doing all that loud jumping and bumbling and stuff like that in my house. So he's two. So if he starts doing that and my house goes in a circle, it's like a huge circle. And when, um, he starts running around in that circle. All I have to say is, I told you to stop. Where's my switch? And that is what gets him. So not even me saying stop, but it's where's my switch. Those words mean something to him because he knows if I have to look for my switch and I have to get my switch, I'll use it. It never gets to that point because my words hold weight to him. It's the same way with my kids. There are some things that they try me on. There are. They're kids. They're not. I mean, my kids are far from perfect. Um, do not get me wrong. Um, 
they're goofy, they're silly, they act silly sometimes that they don't need to be acting silly. And so sometimes they do things that really annoys me. Um, so even them, what works for my kids is my facial expression. Because my boys are big, them little switches ain't gonna do nothing for them anymore. They they hurt, but they're more like, ow. They're annoying kind of hurts to them. You know, they don't, whatever. What works for them is my what I say. Because when I say, when I get to the point where I'm telling you to stop and you're not stopping and you're frustrating me and you're starting to really, really, really upset me, guess what comes next? Mental discipline. And that mental discipline is... Y'all ain't playing that game for the rest of the night. Or I might take your game. Y'all are, that game is gone for 24 hours. Oh, that gets on there. Oh, they hate that. So it's verbal, then it's mental. So all I have to do is threaten them with something that they love. They love to do. And I mean, that could be anything from, I'm taking every privilege you have, which means in my house, every privilege you have means any device that has electricity to it. Any device that has electricity to it, TV, uh, computer, tablets, um, well, they don't have phones, but um, video games, whatever. They're allowed to go outside, but they are not allowed to do anything that holds electricity. Oh, they can't stand that. Now, I make my kids go outside and play anyways throughout the day. But for them to have that's the only option, oh, it drives them nuts. So they know that when I say, you're getting on my nerves, stop, then they stop. Of course, sometimes it doesn't work and I have to say, hey, Eric, get them before I get them. And then Eric's like, all right, y'all, y'all better stop. Y'all aren't going to be able to do nothing. So then, you know, then they stop. But your words have to have some form of, they have to hold weight. They can't just be something that just you speak it and it just rolls off their, off the top of their head. They're like, whatever, she ain't saying, she, whatever. That don't mean nothing what she said. Your words have to hold weight. They cannot just be words spoken because then you're wasting your breath. You know, you're just wasting your breath. So I'm going to go ahead and end it with that because I am trying to make my videos rather small um, and, you know, because sometimes it can be annoying to watch really long videos. So um, with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and remind you to subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you hit the notification bell and select all. Um, also, make sure that you hit the like button. Do not forget to hit like. Like this video. Comment if you feel you need to and share this video with your family, friends, or just on your page, whatever. Um, with that being said, we're going to catch y'all on the flip side.